Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm Courtney. And I'm MK. How are ya? You know, I'm living the dream. Living yes. the dream. Correct. I, um, I don't know, I hung out with Jill on Friday night. And then I had a barbecue with the middle school teachers and my family on Saturday night. Today I went to the gym. Look at you're thriving. I know. I've got a coffee date tomorrow. Aw. Not with a boy. With my friend Emma. But there's coffee. I know. I love a good coffee date. Right. With my friend Emma. And, you know, just living the dream. Um, This episode of the podcast will come out on August 11th. Right? Gosh. Yeah, that sounds right. (laughs) Yeah, that is correct. What is time? 11th, um, which means that after this episode comes off, I have one day of work and then I'm off for a week. I'm taking an actual like week off of work. Mm. Brianna will be in town. <gasps> She's coming to visit for a whole month. A whole month? I don't know. Oh, that's so exciting. So exciting. So, you know, just... Oh, on the 13th of August, two days after this episode comes out, I will be seeing Avril Lavigne and Machine Gun Kelly in Cleveland. Stop. This weekend, I'm going to Canada. Oh, you're living it up. I am living the dream. You are. But it's so- because then school's going to start again. <laughs> and all of my dreams will be shattered. At least your favorite student, maybe not your favorite student, but one of your favorite students is coming back. Your students will listen to this. Your favorite student's coming back. That you thought was leaving. Well, no, I'm very happy that she's coming back. That's not my favorite student. My favorite student left. He graduated. Yeah, and then and then he left. and then he proceeded to spread rumors about my relationship to the entire middle school. So lovely. Love that. Um person. no, my um I promised the kids that every year my favorite student would always be an eighth grader so that I wouldn't have the same favorite student more than one year in a row and that none of the kids would ever get upset. And the eighth graders all know who my favorite student in their class is. They were like, well, we all know Ethan's going to be the new Gerald next year. Nobody has to worry about it. It's always going to be Ethan. And I was like, well, at least at least now you're not fighting over it. Right. At least everyone's on the same page here. Yeah, so, um, but he does summer tutoring, so I still get to see Ethan every week. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. How fun. How are you? I am. Thriving isn't the word I would use for my life. Yeah. Um, I would also not say I'm living the dream. I was going to say, I think you're, you're living, like, maybe a daydream, but definitely not the dream. I am living... <laughs> Um, I frequently, I've been doing my Duolingo, as you know. Um, and I have not, as you know. <laughs> I know. And uh, neither has Brianna, as I know. She okay, but she's in a different country. Care where she is. You did it when you were in Thailand. You were in a different country, too. Yeah, but a lot of times the apps don't work the same way there in different countries. I don't care. Okay. I can't be mad at her. I use her family plan. But, um, so I frequently text noel and just say j'habite in hell which means i live in hell i did know that which is fine um but when i'm not being uh pessimistic and what's the other jaded that's the word i'm looking for Mm, um i'm watching a lot of tv and i'm really 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 trying to read my books i'm reading at least a chapter to a day of my book that's Um, so good i haven't picked up a single book all summer uh, well, I've been reading this Victor Mintho's book that my mom recommended like three years ago. Um, and I finally got around to it. Um, Cause I'm trying to do the Amazon Kindle summer reading challenge. And it's one of the books on the list. So I was like, okay, I'll finally read it. It's really good. I'm like almost halfway through. 
I was um, thinking, I was thinking that maybe since it's now August, I should probably reread the books that I assigned the kids to read for summer reading. So I'm prepared to grade their projects. Yeah. Um, and then I, reads. Yeah. And then I thought about going to grab them from the office today. And then I remembered it's Monday and Nate works on Mondays and I didn't want to talk to him. So I didn't. Fair. So I'll get them tomorrow. Yeah. I think that's a great plan. Um, yeah, and so I've been, um, I am, I will say, I'm very thrilled with TV lately. I've been watching Marvel. I've been pleasantly surprised. Um, I did not care for The Punisher. No. Shocker. Um, I did, however, like Blade Trinity, which I liked the first two Blades, too. And I also adore Ryan Reynolds. So Yeah. It's funny because I was talking about you Saturday. I went to lunch oh. with my friend and we were talking about you and your Marvel rewatch because we got into a heated debate over whether or not the Civil War was really as big a deal in the MCU as it was in the comic books. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, comics are next. Fun fact. Shows first. It's not. In the comics, no, I believe that. Yeah. But, um, but so we were talking about your Marvel rewatch and I was talking about how you were in the Blade era of Marvel movies. No, I and finished then, the Blade era. I'm in the Blade Trinity era, which is no, like, but I mean, like, I mean, like the later. not the MCU and not like the shitty oh. '60s TV, like the the Blade Daredevil gotcha. Punisher yes. era of TV or of movies. And I was talking, we were talking about how the first Blade movie was fantastic, the second Blade movie was fine, eh. the third Blade movie, if Ryan Reynolds had been in it, it sh- it wouldn't have survived. Oh. It was I mean, ter- that is so, very so true. Bad. <laughs> But I just, I think you could drop Ryan Reynolds in the middle of anything, and I'm just going to find it hilarious. I'm going to love you, it. Did you watch, oh my god, what, there was two Ryan Reynolds movies that I watched recently that were both Yes, I watched so one good. of them, and I did not watch the other one. So there was the one that was <laughs> the Free Guy, is that what it is called? Oh, I loved Free, so I watched it in theaters when it came out. Oh, I loved I Free Guy. Loved <laughs> I loved Free Guy. And then what was the other one? It was a time travel one. Yeah, that's the one I didn't watch. Oh. It's on Netflix. Oh, The Adam Project. Yeah. It was, oh, the newest one, though, is Red Notice. And I started watching that, but I didn't finish it. I but, also did that, no. but we started really, I started really late over the holidays with my family. And um, I watched, like, the first half and fell asleep. But, no, The Adam Project. Actually, The Adam Project's technically newer. It's 2022. So good. And the little kid who plays young Ryan Reynolds in that movie, I don't, this kid must have fucking studied so hard. Like, it, it is, it's worth watching just for him, his imitation oh, of Ryan Reynolds. Oh, I can't wait to watch yeah. it. I do, I do want to watch it. Um, Nora, one of my coworkers, she told me that it was really yeah, good. so um, good. And last, before we dive in, last but not least, I do want to bring up a new horror show that I thought was meant to be a drama. Oh, the new Pretty Little Liar spin. Oh my god. It's terrifying. It is like, but it's like kitschy, but not. I guess. Like, do you remember when Ravenswood came out? Not anything like Ravenswood. Oh, okay. It's like, no. Because well, like, Ra- Ravenswood all. freaked the shit out of me. Oh, see, I didn't. I watched like the first couple episodes, but never really got into it. But mm-hmm. it makes me feel like I'm watching like Halloween. Oh. Yeah, like that kind of horror. Not like psychological no. thriller. I mean, it's also got psychological thriller because the uh, the whole idea is, A, but they reference so many like horror movies. So like they have a Carrie reference. I've only watched three episodes. Let me start there. I sound like I've watched an entire life's worth of these episodes now. Yeah. But uh, I mean, they reference all of these horror films and it's so fun. And it's got like, you know how in the very beginning, it- did you watch Pretty Little Liars? Yes. So, you know, in the very beginning, the parents were a lot more involved yeah. And be- before they just kind of didn't exist anymore. Didn't exist anymore, yeah. So, that's how this one's starting out, too, and I really like it, and I think it might be better. And I loved Pretty... When I tell you I loved Pretty Little Liars, I went to the premiere of The Perfectionist downtown and cried. And watched the whole thing and loved it. I'd never watched Ravenswood. That was a, other than like the first couple, that was like a thing. I don't know. It didn't well, it, it was also because none of the girls were in it. It was just yeah. Kayla. It was just Kayla, but also I love Kayla. I do too. But it's a whole new cast, a whole new like setting. It is 
wild. If you have HBO Max, I highly recommend it if you're looking for like a horror filler. It has a similar vibe to Cruel Summer, but more horror. Okay. So. Um, no, I've just been watching reality TV at summer. That's what I do in the summer. Um, Big Brother is really weird this year. I like have not gotten attached to a single person in the house. I'm just watching it because it's on. Um, RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars All Winners season seven just finished, and Jinx Monsoon won, and which was absolutely I knew from episode one that Jinx was going to win. Fantastic! Um, and uh, I think we're on week three or four of The Bachelorette. I don't even know what's happening with The Bachelorette. I'm so it's so good because okay, basically, so it's two girls, right? Two Bachelorettes. But also, like, I don't know how much of it is the producers, like, making it seem like it, it's the girls. But, like, it's basically being, like, the girls are being, like, this is not working. We're changing the rules, like, all the time. So, like, in the last episode, they were, like, instead of all of you being here to date each of us, we're going to give you a rose from us. And if you don't want to date us, you can leave. If I give you a rose, you're only here for me. If she gives you a rose, you're only here for her. And you don't get to cross over because this is some bullshit. Well, it is, to be fair. Yeah. I love so, that. Yeah. So tonight's episode will be the first one where they only have their own guys. And they're not going on, like, massive group dates with both of them. So we shall see how that goes. Oh. But, um, yeah. Uh, Grey's Anatomy is not back yet. But there's been some very interesting cast announcements for Grey's Anatomy over the last couple of weeks. I saw that. Oh, I texted you already. I yes. Um, yes. But then also, like, The Last Kingdom's done forever. I know. I don't, like, other than Grey's Anatomy, is there anything? Oh, Doctor Who won't be back oh. till October. And that is, like, it's going to be an episode in October and then, like, another yeah. episode next year. Like, it's it's... British TV is awful to keep track of. So, like, yeah, TV is not not giving me a lot of joy last few weeks. Um, it's bringing me joy, I'm glad. but it's because I'm all over the place. I'm not necessarily keeping up with what's modern, and when I am, it's the one thing I did start. <laughs> Again, we will get into the show. I promise. Um, I did start watching Uncoupled which is the new sitcom with Neil Patrick Harris on Netflix. Oh, okay, okay. I know that. phenomenal. I watched all of it last night. <laughs> every, every bit of it. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm also, like, actively making a restaurant reservation. That is fine. Submit. Um, that's it. I did it. I did it. Okay, um... But yeah, you know what else we need this week other than restaurant week? Yes. We need Um, spirituality in our lives. We do. You're correct. Forgive the fuck out of someone today. Yo, I forgive you and wave. That easy. Yeah. Secret bonus perk. Forgiving someone usually pisses them off worse than anything else. That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. I think um, one time that was my so um one time I had a very massive um best friend breakup where uh and at the end of the fight when we decided that there was just no way we could handle being friends anymore, I said, I don't hold a grudge. I'm not mad at you. This is what life has come to. I will continue to pray for you and I hope your life gets better. And that was the last thing I ever said. The response was very unkind. But I was like, but I didn't respond back to that. I was like, namaste, bitch. Namaste. I love it. I forgive you. See, you're already following the rules. I don't know who I need to forgive. Probably a lot of people. Probably a lot of people. Well, I can only take it a day at a time. Maybe I'll do like one tomorrow and then like one next year. We'll, we gotta take it slow. But uh, 
things that don't <laughs> very slow. <laughs> yes, that was good. That was good. We were in the same place there. Bates Motel, season two finale. It is called The Immutable Truth. It aired May 5th, 2014, and it was rated 8.8 out of 10. Do you think it's our highest? It's definitely our highest. So I think it was I think it was 8.6 last week. Yeah. 8.8, damn. 8.8. Also, happy Cinco de Mayo. Yes. For the life of me, I could not remember what my fifth was. I was like, what is this? I was taking my notes earlier. Literally, the holiday is called 5 of May. Look, I understand. <laughs> I do know enough Spanish to understand that. But my brain just didn't want to work. It's also, awesome. my ex-boyfriend's birthday is May 6th. And so I just, you know, got like a wall. Um, My friend's birthday in college was May 5th and all of her parties for her whole life have been single to Morgan parties instead of <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um I uh did a little bit of a twist up this week because oh. I'm really sick about of talking about Happy by Pharrell. Okay. Um even though this would be the last week, I don't care. I am changing it up anyways. The number one song from the UK is Summer by Calvin Harris. Exactly. Yeah. That's not watching, MK was jamming. That's a jam. Um, that's a, that's I never like hopped on the Calvin Harris train, but I like know who he is and he's like fine. Um, I was on the Calvin Harris train until I realized that like he like fucked over Taylor Swift and then I was off the Calvin Harris train. Yeah. I'm also like not like a dancey person. Mm. So his music's not really my taste. That's fair. Um, and the number one movie, which is Soup's Fun, is Neighbors. Do you remember that film with Zac Efron? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, that was a fun time. That was. It was a good time. Um, literally nothing else happened on May 5th, 2014. Uh-huh. So I have picked just some random other May 5th things that have occurred. I was getting um, ready. I was getting ready for my college graduation. I was probably getting ready to go see Nick's Rachel's fiance's graduation. Oh, okay. He graduated the year before us. Was it one year or two years? Oh, gosh, I don't even know. Two years? No. Oh no, my <laughs> two of my best friends graduated this year when I was living with them. Oh, it's okay. fine. My brain, it's fine. Other yeah. things that happened on May 5th, in 1921, Chanel number no. 5 was released. Fun fact. Oh. And some notable birthdays. Um, there are a wide range of types of people, so I decided to just pick three people that do not go together at all. Okay. Um, Karl Marx. Fantastic. I love that. Tammy Wynette. Why not? And Henry Cap. Cavill, Cavill, Henry Cavill. Oh, what a what a gem! Three very different people, but all born on May fifth. Um, so the director, Tucker Gates. This of guy course. has done it all, but like two episodes or something. Same writers. Shocking, I know. I know. So this episode, because we have not gotten to her yet, I wanted to talk about Kathleen Robertson. Plays Jody. Oh, last streams. Uh, yep, this is this is the time. Um, she's known for Scary Movie Two, Tin Man, Hollywood Land, and The Last Exit. I Tin Man. It was a it was a short run TV series. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I loved that show. It was like a, a weird sci fi Wizard of Oz thing, and like that that um. I don't remember who she, her being in it, but also, like, I didn't know that anybody else knew that that existed. Well, that's what she's known for. So somebody Fantastic. else knew, other than you. Um, I may or may not have seen Scary Movie 2. I have seen various scary movies. 
Um, I definitely, I, I know I didn't see. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Tin Man was starring Zoe Deschanel and Alan Cumming. It was phenomenal. Oh, fun. Yeah, it was so good. Well, she was also in it. A lot. She sure was. She's fourth build on the cast. Yeah. Um, what I knew her from, because I don't remember if I've seen Scary Movie 2 or not. Yeah. Was Beverly Hills 90210. Like, the 90s one, not like the new cast. Okay. And uh, she joined the show late. Okay. She joined fourth season, I think it said, and was there for like seventh or eighth season as a regular okay um so big time beverly hills 90210 i have watched yeah. various episodes of that i assume i know her from there okay okay um her husband is chris cowles who is a director and nope he is a producer sorry and um the movie that he most recently produced that i knew was blockers Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blockers. That was a good one. I went to this tiny little theater on Coney Island Avenue, like in lower Brooklyn, and it has three seat, uh, three theaters. It has a red carpet. You still walk down. They give you actual, like those red tickets that you tear off for your ticket. I it's like that. stupid cheap and you get like a glass Coke bottle and popcorn and it's like limited with like your option. It was so cute. Like you could fill the theater move because it was so old and like you could, uh, we were next to like a, uh, I can't remember, was it, was it the same time Jurassic, um, no, 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 Jumanji came out? Maybe. It was around the same time because yeah. there was really loud action next to me and I could like hear shooting every now and then, which is very funny in my comedic, it was just like such a good vibe. It was so cool. I, I love have, that. I loved it. Um, so while I didn't have feelings one way or another on blockers, I had a really great experience when I went and saw it. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, my laptop's dying. <laughs> Hold oh please. my gosh. Oh. Um, it's, I'm surprised it's lived this long. Um, okay. All right. So, do, do, do. oh, she was, did you ever watch the show by Joss Whedon, Dollhouse? Yes. I loved Dollhouse. I watched it late in the game. I watched it like three or four years ago. She was considered as the role for Dr. Claire Saunders. Oh. Obviously, she didn't get it, but she was. Right. And fun fact about her, she's fascinated with serial killers. Aren't we all, though? Aren't we all, though? Yeah. So, um, now that uh, we've done that, Let's uh, let's talk about this finale. I do want to start by saying apologies. My trivia from last week about um, Alex finding Nick was from this episode. Although IMDb put on the other episode. And then when I watched this episode, I still didn't see it happen. I um forgot to look for it because I couldn't remember why we had been talking about it I just remembered you saying that he checked his pulse and then I was like no I knew I was right he definitely didn't see the dead body yet you should probably usually trust your memory over mine um because mine comes up makes up stuff sometimes clearly okay but uh you and Norman me and Norman two peas in a pod (laughs) but uh yeah, so we start just where we left off. Norman's in a box. is just laying there, straight-faced, because what else can he do? And then next scene is Dylan running out of the woods, and he immediately confesses to Alex. Yeah, I was like, first of all, what a chance encounter that is, the first person right. you see. But then also when he was just like, Nick Ford's dead. I killed him. I was like, whoa. But he also Dude. took Norman and I can't find him. Right. It's like, that's a lot to unpack. Okay. Alex is like, okay, cool. Get in the Alex's car. Like, please, please just get in the car. <laughs> like, I, right. no. Like, we will uh, go from here. And uh, that's when I realized that the goof was from this episode and then not the last one. It's in my notes now. Um, yeah, I didn't see him blink. I looked, I tried, I didn't see it. Um, I think someone was dumb probably um, and then 
we go upstairs. The security guy is stealing all of Nick Ford's money and jewels. Okay, and this is when I got confused because, like, when Gail died, immediately somebody else, like, came in. Yeah. And I'm not saying, like, Gil was obviously, like, not the number one, number one. Like, but, like, what is the hierarchy with Nick Ford? Stop. Like, if Nick is dead, who is his number two that his security guard is just going to get away with stealing all that shit? I don't know if there is one. Because he is the number one, whereas, like you said, Gil wasn't. Because we still had Jody in place. Yeah, but like if something happened to Jody, it went to one of her brothers. It went to one of her brothers. It would have probably gone to Blair. Right. If she's dead. And he didn't think about that. Maybe there's no contingency plan yet because it hadn't been long enough. Or he just felt, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Unsecure? Un- unfazed? Unbothered? Invincible. Oh, what a Maybe dick. He felt invincible. What a dick. And he probably would have been had it not been for good old Dylan. Um, and Alex makes this guy tell him where Norman is. And, like, to be fair, if you don't know what's going to happen, your number one is dead. I probably also would steal money and flee the country. Like, for sure. Not a t- a spe- like, it's not like, and I'm a good person and would still do that. Like, he's not. Right. Been, like, been doing all these crazy things. Oh, yeah. Like, that is the least of my concern for him. Oh, for sure. So, um, Dylan is just like, frantically yelling for norman and i thought norman was going to stay silent the whole time i was very concerned because he was so like like straight faced and then he finally starts yelling back i was like thank god his voice is not totally gone i know i was like oh we've made it dylan's gonna find him and then alex just shoots off the lock i am always impressed when When someone shoots shoots off off a lock like I don't, I've never seen it happen in real person, so I don't know if it's that easy, but they make it look flawless. Like, the easiest thing on the planet. I guarantee you I would not do that well with it. I don't care how close I am. I I am always impressed by a man who can handle a firearm. Well, that's true, too. But I am, I'm always impressed with locks and blowing them off. It's it's very impressive. I'm just, I think it's very nifty when people can unfasten a lot would it still um, be as nifty if they did it with c4 no is that like it doesn't if it, it's not as skilled it's not as skilled and it ruins whatever you're trying to get inside of yeah. whereas like shooting off the lock everything's still intact except the lock if you're picking lock same thing that's so fair. like that's fair yeah and like if they have like a um, torch blow torch men I'm in. Okay. But okay. these are intact still. Okay. Or she's kind of a cop out. So, you know. And then we get to the opening credits. This was like the longest opening scene I've ever seen, I think. It was. It was. I realized long. like halfway through the opening scene that it was still the opening scene. I was like, yeah. oh, we still haven't seen credits. Correct. And then it was another like three minutes before we saw the credits. Correct. Um, it was crazy. And when we get back from the credits, um, I want to set this up by saying this episode, I talk about this every week. I know. I'm beating a dead horse. This episode, I thought fairly, like, followed. Um, it didn't jump around a lot. Yeah, 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 no. I felt like it did very well at staying on topic. And I was like, a lot of the times, and even Bates has been doing this towards the end of their season, towards their finales, they use the jumping around as a way to make sure their plot holes get met or make sure things are. Yeah, no, this one was really, really solid. I think because there was really only what, like two storylines kind of happening. Yeah. So, but they were still intertwined because Dylan was in both of them. Exactly. And so it was like, there was no extreme jump anytime we went from one to another. Right. No, it was pretty good. It was really good actually. And it addressed a lot of the plot holes. still, like without doing anything crazy. Yeah. Um, but we do wake up at this point in the hospital mm-hmm. and Norma shows up and she finds out Dylan's the one who found Norman and she just like fawns over him. 
I and was so him. sad for Dylan that she only told him that she loved him because Norman was alive like that. I know. I'm always so sad for Dylan. Like, yeah. ugh, poor thing. Yeah. And uh, she goes in to talk to Norman and he wakes up and he tries to tell her he clear- killed Blair and she's like, no, it's just a dream. She is a fucking you crazy know. person. Like that. I mean, I'm, yes, correct. That was when she was like, no, 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 it's okay. You're just, you went through trauma. It's not real. Ma'am. Ma'am. You could go through trauma and it can be real. Those things are not, those things do not stand apart. No. Um, yeah. And then Norma goes back to the motel with Norman and she tells Emma that Norman just had the stomach flu. She's like, you couldn't find him yesterday. She's like, no, 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 I did. And then he had the stomach flu. And I was like, he's got bandages on his hands and cuts on his face. No, Emma is going to snap. Like 150%. No. Emma's going to snap. Because mm-hmm. if somebody continued to gaslight me like that, I would fucking snap. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, like, Norma's not wrong about why she can't tell Emma. Like, right. She's doing it to keep her safe. Right. And, like, when she when she went off and was like, what was I going to tell her? That you were kidnapped by Nick Ford, but I couldn't tell her because then you'd, they'd kill you? Yeah. I was like, I, mean, I was like, well, yeah, you're, you're right. Not, not entirely wrong. It sucks for Emma, but, like, you are right. And, um, yeah. but, yeah, I was like, Norman looks too bad to have just had the flu. Correct. Like, I had a pretty rough flu where I, like, was dizzy and, like, couldn't really talk, couldn't really eat, couldn't really do anything, kept dropping stuff on myself. But I didn't come back with bandages on my hands. I just came back dehydrated. Correct. No, that is, that is in fact not what would happen if you went to the hospital for the flu. So she decides she's going to cook this fancy dinner for Norman. And so she goes to the supermarket and runs into Christine, who just blows her off. And no, she didn't just blow her off. She went fucking off. Yeah, she blew her off at first, and then Norma like kept going at her, and she went off. She told her she was a train wreck. She was like, "Am I one of the plastic people just walking around?" And she, she was, was like, feisty, but she was not entirely wrong. She was like, no. "I've done nothing but like help you." And the shit that you said about my brother about his family applies to me too. Like I'm his family. Right. And Norma tried to, like, backtrack, and she just was like, nope. And then she was like, yeah, we're having dinner with the mayor, and uh, we'll see about that city council position. And I was like, oh, good, she's going to lose her position now, because she's pissed off Christine. She's an asshole. I mean, fair. Fair. But, like, she knows how this, like, she knows at least enough about how this town works to know you can't. You know, she, she, she should, she should, but she continues every week to do shit that, like, doesn't make any sense and is just going to get her fucked up. Yeah, true. But also at this point, she, like, kind of wants to run away, so maybe she just doesn't care. I mean, she obviously, like, wants to try and make things up with Christine, but who knows, who knows. So, uh, now it's dinner time, and she's telling Norman about her running with Christine, and then she's like, I know that I should have said those things to George, but I tried to sleep with him, and all this stuff, I was like, you should not tell your son this. No, 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 What is no. happening right now? He's no. not even, like, a grown son. He's 17. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Ugh. And then he try he like makes her listen to him about Blair, and he's like, "I did this," and she's like, "You didn't, you didn't." He's okay. like, "I did." The mm-hmm. way though, it was so subtle, so subtle. But he was like, "Well, that's I blacked out, and that's why you couldn't tell me, isn't it?" And like, I was like, mm, "All of the egg, yeah." And when she says, uh, you didn't, you slept with her, you didn't kill her. And he just looks at her and he says, I think I did, mother. I was like, because you did. You did do it. Uh. Ew, when he comp- oh, when he compared the memory of feeling himself kill her to gingerbread at Christmas. Oh. I was like, those are not the same thing. 
No. Ooh. No, oh. murder and cookies are very different. Are very different. Are they? Not if you're reading a um, Joanne Flukes novel, but you should definitely other- not have too many of either. That's true. Less murders than cookies. Yeah. Definitely less murders than cookies. <laughs> not a question. <laughs> I don't know why you hesitated. (laughs) (laughs) Makes me a little concerned, but it's fine. It's fine. I've never, I'm still, my, my sex and cookie number still higher than my murder number. Good. Good as it should be. And I feel like your cookie number should be the highest because. It is. Don't worry. It definitely is. My cookie number, my cookie number has been able to outdo sex numbers in a single sitting. Oh, good. Good. Because cookies are really good. <laughs> and if you'd had less cookies... That's so sad. It's so sad. Everyone should have cookies. Yes. Except Norman, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what sets him off. Maybe <laughs> cookies. We'll never know. Cookies, um, alcohol, his mother, sex. Literally anything. Um, but I do like... I do feel bad for Norman because like, yes, he did terrible things and yes, he continues to do terrible things, but it's also not totally his fault. Like if Norma would have just put him in an institution when she discovered that he had this like mental thing happening, this never would have happened. Maybe, maybe his dad would have died because that was like the first kicking off point of someone dying. Like even if he had like blackouts, maybe they weren't really, you know, anything bad. Like, after that, it's like, oh, you probably should be institutionalized now. Correct. And so, like, it's not totally his fault. But, like, also, he's not But also, his her reaction when she, like, screamed and then was like, eat your dinner. It's getting cold. I was like, That was my next time. Bitch. Like, that was way too easy of a shift in personality. And I'm like, mm. are we going to figure out she has something, like, specifically wrong? Not just, like, crazy? Right, because like, if you're going to sit there and tell me that he's the only one with split personality after that fucking switch, no, sir. Well, I don't think it's split personality, but I think it could be bipolar or, like, mania or, like, you know. Something. It's Something. Like, but she doesn't change. She just flips the switch and it's like her moods go one way or the other. It's not yeah. personality. No, it's, that's true. It was. So I think it's some kind of mania that she has, <sighs> at least. Correct. Um, and then Norman goes up to his room and is digging through his drawer and he pulls out a gun. I was like, bad idea. Nope. I do not support. Why on earth does he have access to a gun? She knows the amount of people he's killed. She also doesn't need a gun because I don't trust her mental state either, but definitely not Norman. Like he's definitely killed people without knowing. At least she like meant to do it when she did it. And so right. yeah and um and like to be fair the first murder of hers was more or less in self-defense like oh, did absolutely. she did she i mean did she was she probably a little more aggressive and nasty and like awful about it like the, yeah. the like the extra the like the eight extra stabs probably wouldn't have held up very well in court right. um but was it more or less self-defense? Absolutely. Correct. And that's yeah. kind of what I mean. It's like, she she meant to do it. Yeah. Did she overdo it? Yes. Did she know what she was doing, though? Also, yes. Like, yeah. Norman doesn't know what he's doing. No. Until, no, apparently, no. years later, when it comes back to his memory. And that's too late by then. So, um, we had a... Was, that, was the table... Was that the same scene where he asked about his dad? No. Oh, okay. Oh, think- you're right. You're right. You're right. Just kidding. That's much later. Yeah, and uh, we had this brief commercial. I don't know if you watch it on Peacock or elsewhere, but when it came back from the commercial, Norma looks crazed. She's sitting oh, in her rocking chair. Just I pay for I pay for commercial free TikTok, so I, or for TikTok Peacock. So I was like, what? What commercial? It was a it was a a way to come back from a commercial. Like just she's like sitting there, just like rocking in the chair, like crazed, looking at him. And um, looking, she's not. Film, she's not even looking at him. She's looking at the computer at tickets to move to Montreal. Yeah, 
And uh, that whole setting scene was kind of an homage to where she ends up in the film. So, good times. Um, and then Alex shows up. And he tells her that he scheduled the polygraph test. And it's happening. It's time to get things ready. Yeah. And uh, she's panicking, but we flip back to Norman, who's upstairs, writing down random words. He writes down apple pie. He writes down Emma. He writes down mom. He writes down, like, our mother. And he's just like, it's like a to-do list. But it doesn't specify what has to be done or why. Which, to be fair, sometimes my to-do lists look like that, too. Well, yes. But I could probably figure out that it's not anything bad if I look at your list. Right. Kids. I haven't like, killed multiple people. Right. Right. So I'm not sure if he's getting ready to, like, take these people out or if he's getting ready to commit suicide. It's like a toss-up. We do learn his intentions, but at this point, we have no idea what's happening. Correct. Um, and then he goes down to the motel, and Emma's still working, because it's not her two weeks or whatever she put in. And uh, no, Norman calls her. Yeah, he and, calls her and is like, I left my notebook. Can you come yeah. bring it to me? And she's like, of course I can. Like, nothing's wrong. And I was like, okay, this is fine. And uh, when she gets up there, he pulls out the old poetry book that they used to read. That was kind of like what they first bonded over. Um, you remember way back to the beginning of season one, 20 season weeks ago. Season one, episode one, when we didn't understand just how fucked up everyone really was. Uh, this actually may have been episode two, but uh, but yeah, it was very big. Yeah. Um, and then I thought he was going to tell Emma everything. So did I. I was and, like, when he was like, uh, I'm going to tell you, I was like, ma'am and honestly like his intention is to keep emma with his mom so neither are alone and i think kind of made the best decision i wrote i wrote what is he doing to emma and then my next note just is oh i get it he thinks well i thought he i didn't know if he thought he was gonna go to jail or if he was thought he was gonna like kill himself but he thinks he's going away and so he needs emma to stay with his mom yeah so he tells her one of the truths there's a lot she's missing, but he tells right. her the. But he about he Dylan. tells her he tells her the one that is the most able for her to empathize with Norma. Yeah, and also the one that makes the most sense why she doesn't know. Yes, because but the thing is, like, she's such an empathetic person, and Norma, no matter like both Norma and Dylan are absolutely the victim in that situation. So there's yeah. no reason because like he can't tell the truth about his stuff without making Norma not the victim anymore. Yeah. And Emma is so like weird and preachy and attached to people that he like needs mom to be more of a victim so that Emma will right. want to protect her. Right. And he's like, mother loves you and blah, blah, blah. Please reconsider. And, uh, she's like, I'll think about it. Yeah. And I'm like sitting there thinking, and I'm like, just off of this one thing, how is this family so chill? Like, I know Dylan's had a lot of outbursts. And I know that like they've inwardly had some outbursts, but like yeah. they live their life pretty stably for people. I mean, you know, aside from like murder and whatnot. But like on a day to day, they like go to class, go to work, make it through the day and go home. And I'm like, how like, there are days that, like, I wake up wrong or I slept less hours than I needed to and I can't even make it to lunch. Like, and I didn't even kill anyone. I just didn't sleep well. See, I absolutely fake it through every single day of my life. So I am I'm with them on that one. I think I would have panic attacks every day. I just constantly. They would have to institutionalize me. Hmm. So I come you know. visit. Thank you. Would you bring me cookies? If they let me, yeah. You know, if they didn't let you, would you bring me cookies? Probably, yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I would I would say cookies probably aren't the thing that would set me off. No. I had to guess. Yeah. A lot of cookies. I haven't done anything crazy yet, so. Perfect. That's fine. Yeah, so now we go to Zane and Jody, and my heart almost leaped out of my chest to the scene. Because Jody is telling Zane all about Nick's death, and she's like, it's fine to come home. 
I don't care about anyone. We're going to get through this. Everything's changed now. And he's like, what about Dylan? And she's like, what about him? And he's like, oh, that's cold. And I was like, are you kidding me, Jody? You're the one, you're the only one that I don't hate yet. And then we pan over and Alex and Dylan are staring. I know. I was like, damn, Alex, what a guy. What and a guy. Like, yes, Jody. Yes. And uh, so I really thought she was going to turn on Dylan. And then we go back to Norman. And that's when I was like, oh, this must be his suicide prep list. Because, like, obviously he's leaving. And um, he's putting his taxidermy away so no one else has to do it. Um, and then I put a lesson in preparing to go to jail. I had a lot of thought processes. In this yeah, time. that's why I thought maybe he was preparing to go to jail. Like, he knew yeah. that that was going to be his only option. Because he was okay with the fact that he had done that. Right. And so he... Uh, tells his mom she's like i'm gonna go take a shower and wash my hair he's like wait just hang out with me tonight and of course he wants to dance to love songs i was like i love bobby darren but ew yeah why why is this the way we're doing this it was yeah. unsurprised that this was like one of the least uncomfortable scenes with them in this type of situation i feel like but it wasn't Agreed. great but it wasn't great i still didn't love it um so we're back at Jody's and Zane's figured everything out. He cuts the electricity to the house. And then you hear a gunshot. I just want to say, and hold on, before we do that, in that weird scene with Norman dancing to his, with his mom and everything, I don't know what was said that made me sad for Norman. But something was said because my note says, Norman, you poor thing. And then... I was like, that's weird. I take that back. But like, I don't, I don't remember what was said that I felt bad for Norman. I mean, I felt bad for Norman a lot this episode. So I also am not sure that I believe you. Okay. Well, then my note for this says, are you fucking kidding me? So. Right. (laughs) It's getting past my bedtime. I am another full disclosure i am running off of no caffeine because i started having anxiety when i started drinking coffee this morning oh good so i've not had caffeine and it is after nine o'clock i did not have coffee but i did have an um a pre-workout energy drink but then i actually worked out so like didn't really right i had water um but yeah so then <laughs> Jody goes and gets her gardening shears, and I was like, all right, we're about to, things are getting real now. Mm-hmm. And then you hear that they shot the dog outside. I was like, how dare they? Yeah. I was devastated. Yeah. I'm devastated. Not a, fan, not a fan of that. Whew. And then Jody and Zane come across each other, and Jody cuts Zane, and then Zane shoots Jody. And then Alex come in and he's like, remember I told you about this? I was going to come back. And he said, remember oh, when I said I was going to burn you down? I'm a man of my word. And then he just, just shot sure. him with a fucking rifle right to the chest. And I was like, God damn. Yeah. And uh, so Zayn and Jody are dead. So that's how we had to cover Jody this episode because she's gone now. Y'all um, didn't want to leave her out. Um, and Dylan's just like, what now? And Alex like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So uh, he's so good at cover stories. When he said, okay, so this is the story. Or he said, this is, this is the story. I was like, he said it in exactly the same tone and exactly the same words that he said it to Norma, Norma about killing Zach. And I was like, Alex, my this- loves. My man. This is, this is the story we're using. <laughs> okay, sir. But also, like, he always makes sense and it always gets away with it. Because he knows, like, how to cover shit up. Yeah. It's rough. And then uh-huh. he does the thing that I've been afraid of since the beginning. He basically tells Dylan to take over. He makes Dylan the kingpin of the whole shebang. And he says, if this, you just like, you've seen what happens and how this goes when people don't follow the rules, I need someone in charge that I know is going to follow the rules. And that's you. Who knows when they can, when they have to follow the rules and when they don't have to, like what can happen and what can happen. And Dylan's like, no, thank you. And he's like, 
no, you're gonna do this. You don't. You don't really have a choice. Yeah, and I uh, saw it coming. Fine. Um, and then we go to Dylan and Norma, and they they're meeting out by the water, and she of course goes to Dylan, which is a problem. So she tells Dylan that Norman thinks he killed Blair. I wrote, why does Dylan have to fix everything? Why does Dylan have to fix everybody else's fucking problems? Why? I have no idea. Why? He's 22. Maybe 23 now. I don't know. I think it's probably been a year by now. But like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So it's insane. And uh, she tells him that uh, she's like, I bought tickets to Montreal because I think that's going to be the best. And then it turns out she bought him a ticket, too. Okay. My mom, my parents watch Stargate with me, but they don't watch Bates. They don't have any interest in Bates. They occasionally watch it if I'm watching it and they're in the room. But they don't want to watch it. When he said, you bought me a ticket, my mom looks at me and she goes, I'm so pissed off that I understand the show well enough to understand what the look on his face meant in that moment. (laughs) It was like... It was so sad. Oh, I said this is, and then she had that whole speech about like how he was beautiful and like she shouldn't be holding it against him that like what happened to create him wasn't beautiful. Like that whole thing. I was like, this is heartbreaking and I hope she means it. Like I want nothing more than for this to be genuine. I think she means it. I'm sure she's going to do something stupid again because I think a lot of times she does mean what she says. She just it, she can't just handle it. A lot. Yeah. And then Dylan, because he's the only one who has a brain on this show. Other Literally, than my note says Dylan's the only fucking adult on this whole fucking show. Oh my gosh. Truly, though. He's like, maybe you shouldn't run. He's like, let him do the test. He's like, worst comes to worst. Like, even if he did it. They'll put him in an, an asylum. And he right. And she's that. like, no, he can't go in an institution. And he's like, maybe that's what he needs i was like yeah, yeah for real he was like and honestly maybe that's what you need woman for real go to the same institution and live in different ends Words. yeah different 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 ends of that building right yeah um and then we go home and norman's gone again <sighs> norma goes and finds a taxidermy bird, bless, and a note from Norman. It was a beautiful bird. It was a if taxidermy someone, bird. If someone taxidermied a bird for me, I would marry them. If someone taxidermied a bird for me, I would never speak to them again. I don't care for birds that much, and I don't have any room for anything taxidermy. I love birds. I know. I know. <laughs> Just like Norman. Now you're like Norman. <laughs> we um, all have a little bit of Norman Bates in us. Okay. That's <laughs> good for everyone, I guess. Um, and I should, where on earth could he have gone? Because I was like, I have no idea. So she's running downstairs. She runs into Emma. And it turns out he told Emma he was going to go take a walk in the woods. Like, wrote, super cash. I wrote, oh, shit. No. I know. It's never good to take a walk in the woods. No, never. And, um... Especially not after you've left your mom a taxidermy bird and a note that says, I'll always be a part of this family. Right. No, no good. No good. So she runs into the woods, and he has a gun and just takes off. And she's like, Norman, come back here. He's come back here. And he falls over and still gets up and keeps running. He's, like, limping away. And so naturally she catches him because he's limping and she's not. Yeah. And uh, he is so crazed in this moment. That he kicks her in the stomach. Yeah. And he still wants to kill himself. Like, he's holding the gun at her, but I don't think he'll kill her. I think he would no. just turn it on himself. And um, this is where he says, I blacked out the day that dad died. And he's like, what happened? And she's like, if you give me the gun... I'll tell you. Okay, but before he asks about his dad, she's trying to, like, convince him not to kill himself. And she says says that if he kills himself, she'll kill herself, too, because she can't live without him. And I was like, that's not fucking fair. No. That is not fair. You are a parent. You don't get to say that to your kid. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, granted, like, your kid's fucking crazy, and, like, I understand, like, and you shouldn't, he shouldn't be trying to kill himself either, but, like, that's not fair. Right, right. Um, yeah, so she gets the gun back, and he's like, how can you ask me to live like this? And I was like, yes, Norma, how can you ask me to live like this? Like, you need to get him institutionalized where he can be medicated. Get him out. This is not good for anyone. And then she's, like, hugging him, and she, like, kisses him on the mouth and i was like this is you're just kind of being weird about stuff i said that that kiss that kiss was way too close for comfort yeah again this is like not the weirdest scene they've had between the two of them but just no but then when he says okay fine you win i know i was like i know no no and then we come upon the last scene and it's polygraph day and yeah. Norma's making him pancakes or waffles or something. I don't know. She made him breakfast. Yep. And she's sitting down drinking her coffee and looking at him. And then Dylan walks in. That whole scene, I wrote, what the fuck is this? That I whole scene was fucking weird. Loved the lighting in this scene because it made it weird. Yeah, no, the lighting was amazing. The music was fucking amazing. And I was so uncomfortable. And that was the whole point. I loved yeah. it so much. <laughs> And um, it really felt like a, like almost like a 50s, 60s vibe. It wasn't like a mod. It was like taking us back. Yeah. It was she was weird. in her, you know, 50s look. She was just like a 50s mom drinking coffee, not eating breakfast. Like, it was, yeah. yes. Very uh, typical. I loved it. And, uh, and I was like, where are they getting this polygraph test at? Is this some abandoned building? Must have been. I have no idea. Still don't know where they were. Some yeah. abandoned building is what I'm deciding. Okay. Um, but as he's like walking through the building and like going to sit down and start answering the questions for the polygraph, you can like subtly watch his face change. And it changes with every question. And it's mm-hmm. like, that is a lot of work to make your face change with every question and still be so subtle. It was, it was intense. It was incredible and intense. And um, then he, of course, has a dissociation with Norma, where Norma says she's the one who killed Blair. I saw, my note says, oh, fucking hell, what the shit? No. And now he doesn't believe he did it anymore. And so now he can tell the truth. That's a lie. I mean, psychopaths can lie on polygraphs, too, because you just have to... Yeah, Norma's a fucking psycho. But, uh... It's literally it the name of out. the movie. I know. Then it turns out he passed the test. Everyone's celebrating. Everyone's happy. And then we pan back to where he's sitting. And with his face. When they started the pan around his body, I go, they're going to end with the movie shot. That's what they're going to do. They're yes, going to end the season with the movie shot. And then they. And then they put Norma up in the corner. Incredible. My background blur is on, so you can't see my notebook, which is really unfortunate. But you, the, it says "fuck that" in huge letters. Oh my gosh, it gave me chills. It was so incredible, so yeah, well incredible. done, incredible. And the lighting in that scene was fucking insane, and the camera angles and the like focus that they use. Truly, like, the perfect way to end season two. Like, yeah. cherry on top. I thought it was yeah. so incredible. And um, that's the end of season two, guys. We made it somehow. We made it. I don't know how. I think we are slowly spiraling the more we go through the show, but it's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm um, Okay. Who do you want to punch in the face? Norman. Yeah. Um, I put Norma. Fair. Fair. Only because I felt bad for Norman sometimes. And it was because of things Norma had done. Not because of That's things. true. But that last scene just really, I would no, like to but punch also, him like, straight up. Yeah. Who's your MVP? Alex. Dylan. 
That's fair. I mean, also, also a good choice. Dylan would have been my right, and so is Alex. And so I was like, I know you're gonna pick Alex. I'll pick Dylan. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. Like, can we say? Am I predictable? Yes. Yes, but like, it's kind of hard not to be with the show. You you don't have very many choices. True. Um, What if I just like came out and was like the polygraph dude? (laughs) Wild, out of left field. Um, his name is but. BT, Quite literally, everyone else is dead. Yeah, no, <laughs> they are. Um, my only trivia was that the scene of Norma in the rocking chair was in a was, rush of the film. Yeah, the last scene was the yeah. end scene of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then "Dream Lover" is the song that Bobby Darin did that they danced to, Correct. and it came out in 1959, which was the same year the book came out. Very nice. So uh, that's my trivia. That's my it. punching in the face, et cetera. Are we going to tell the folks what we're watching next week for our we are, But do you want to, do you have any like predictions or final? Oh, points? no, I don't fucking know. Everything, everyone, this like, this season could have been the end of the show. I know. It could have like, been. like the, it ended in such a good place. Like season one ended in a place where I was like, they have to address this stuff in season two. This ended in a place where like they could have just ended the show and I wouldn't be mad about it. Like I would be like bummed because I am enjoying it, but I wouldn't be mad if they ended right. it because it ended so perfectly that I don't, I don't know what could happen. Like Emma's going to spiral. We got to deal with Dylan being in charge of everything. Norman is like just straight up like making shit up for himself at this point like everything could go crazy but also like it has such a nice bow on it that I don't even I don't even have a direction to go with predictions yeah I um unfortunately know a couple of spoilers for season three and um not sure how they're gonna work them in there well one of them I get but one of them I'm not sure how they're gonna work it in there but we'll okay so, all right uh, I don't have a prediction curious because I, I am not ready yet. That's fine. <laughs> but since this was the season finale and we don't have much wrap up to talk about, we're gonna do a nice little horror movie for you for next Thriller Thursday. It's a movie we have both been talking about and both wanted to see desperately. So we're gonna be watching Last Night in Soho, which you can find as of like two weeks ago on HBO Max. So I am so excited. I'm so stoked. It's gonna be such a good film. Probably. I literally I told I Dan, I told Dan I was like, um, I know you don't like horror movies, but I have a movie and you're gonna watch it with me. But actually, not yet because I have to watch it for the podcast first, which means I'm gonna be like taking notes and like being like weird while I'm watching it. So like I don't want that to be the first time you watch it with me. So let me watch it first and then, <laughs> and then we'll watch it together. Yeah. Yes. I love it. I love it. But yeah, so uh, that's where we're at. We're going to have the movie coming up and then we'll have our third season of Bates, which is like mm-hmm. wild. Wild. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope you guys all have a wonderful time. You can find us and tell us any of your messages or anything that I almost forgot to talk about. Um, you can email us, deathandaliens at gmail.com. You can find us on all the social media at Death and Aliens. You can find me at ce cloud 13 and you can follow me at e-m-k-a-y underscore superstar and we will see you for our season wrap-up of stargate on sci-fi sunday see ya bye